Hi booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I am coming to you with another weekly reading vlog. This is for week 32. It is August the 4th, 3rd, August the 3rd through August the 9th. <laughs> Today is actually Tuesday. Today is actually the 4th of August. I missed yesterday. I apologize everybody. I really, really do. Yesterday kind of got away from me. I had an extremely lazy day. I did not get into my pajamas all day. I sat around listening to an audiobook, and then when I finished that, then I started reading my book, and I was just doing some knitting, and just by nine o'clock, I was like, oh goodness, I haven't, you know, recorded the introduction to the vlog yet. I'm like, I'll just do it tomorrow, <laughs> which worked out well, because as I like to start these vlogs, I like to sit down and share with you guys all the books that I plan on finishing this week. This week, I have a goal of seven. Let's see if I can do it, but I've already finished two. So I did finish two books yesterday, so I'm going to start off with talking about those two books that I finished, and then I will jump into what I plan on reading this week. So I have my coffee from McDonald's. Yum, yum. So let's get into the two books that I finished yesterday. The first one that I finished was The Other Misses by Mary Kabaka. This was so amazing, you guys. I gave it five stars. I gave this five stars. I didn't have one five-star read in the month of July. First book in August was a five-star read. I absolutely loved this. It is a thriller, of course. So I actually do not want to give anything at all away. I do not want to talk about what this is about at all. I went into this completely blind. I had no idea what this book was about when I decided to pick it up and read it. Now, I actually had this one from NetGalley. So thank you to NetGalley and the publisher Harlequin slash Park Row Books, I believe it is. Um, this actually came out back in February. So my apologies to the publisher for getting to it late. I kind of now wish I got into it a lot sooner because it was so good. So the very, very small premise of this book, it's about a family, a mom, a dad, and the two kids um, who move from Chicago to a small island town in Maine. And a neighbor of theirs is murdered. And that's all I'm going to tell you. That's all you need to know going in. That's more than I knew going in. Um, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I did guess, and I was correct, the twist about halfway through. But it did not diminish anything. It, it, if, if anything, it was like, okay, now I kind of know. Now you're trying to put all the rest of the puzzle pieces together. Do you know what I mean? This was very, very much a psychological um, thriller. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Oh, Mary Kabak, I read before. Now, it says on the front here that she's the author of The Good Girl. I read The Good Girl, and I wasn't 100% impressed with it. Her first book, was it The Good Girl? I can't remember. I read, this is the third book by her now. The first one that I read by her, I really liked. The second one was meh, and then this one I've absolutely loved. So, highly recommend if you are into thrillers, you need to check this one out. The other one that I read yesterday or finished yesterday, unfortunately, was a bit of a dud. Um, one thumb down. It's not too only because I'm holding the tablet. But that was Can't Stand the Heat by Louisa Edwards. Um, this is the first book in a Recipe for Love series. It's a three-book series. <coughs> Excuse me. And the premise of this story is about a woman by the name of Miranda. And she is a food critic for a big magazine. Um, if you are familiar with the magazine, or I don't even know if it's still being published, but it's called Bon Appetit, but it's always been more of a high-end culinary foodie type magazine, not like, you know, the Food Network magazine where it's a little bit more everyday people cooking. Um, it's definitely, this is, that's the kind of magazine that she works for. So it's very, very high-end, very, I don't want to use the term snooty, but you know, a higher-end kind of a foodie magazine. And Adam is a chef, and he is opening a brand new restaurant in Manhattan, New York, and it is called Market, and it's going to be like a, he literally buys the ingredients that morning from the local farmer's market over in Union Square, and then he cooks dishes that go with, so there's no like necessarily set menu, it's kind of this is what we're serving tonight kind of an idea, um, and she is not impressed by him at all, and they end up kind of having a bit of a public disagreement. And he's pretty much like, well, you couldn't handle working in my kitchen. And she's like, well, try me. And he's like, fine. So she ends up spending a month working in his kitchen. And of course, a romance ensues from there. So I ended up giving this book three and a half stars. Now, three stars is an average rating for me. The writing on this was really good. I really, really liked the character of Adam. I really liked the premise of this story. 
I really didn't like Miranda. I'm sorry. From the first page to the last page, she just rubbed me the wrong way. She had this attitude about her that just, and she never softened. To me, it just, if she had grown as a character, I think I would have appreciated it more, but she didn't. And I just, in my opinion, she didn't. I just, I wasn't enjoying it. Now, the reason it went, it, on that basis alone, it would have gotten three stars from me. I bumped it up an extra half a star because of the secondary plot line, which I absolutely loved and what actually saved the book for me. Because at parts, I was debating on actually DNFing this. And that was the relationship between Miranda's brother, Je uh, Jess, and a guy at the um, uh, Adam sous chef named Frankie. And it was adorable. I mean, absolutely delightful. I was, and it would actually go back and forth. So you would get some of the book from Jess's perspective, which was great. And as I was reading it, I would get to like a Miranda and Adam part. I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get back to Jess and Frankie. <laughs> I thought that they were totally adorable and probably could have held a story all their own, like to expand. Um, you know, their story, it was an utter delight and I loved it so, so much. I just thought it was so super cute and so super sweet. And I loved Frankie as a character. He was, you know, he's British and he's kind of that British punk rock of the eighties kind of a, uh, a vibe about him. Whereas Jess has just recently dropped out of his second year of university and he will not tell his sister why. Clearly it's because he's gay. Um, but he is I, something happens and I don't want to say what it is, but something happened to him at university and that's the reason why he left and now he wants to go to NYU. So yeah, it's kind of a whole bunch of things, but his story I loved. Miranda and Adam, meh. So this is the first in a series. There are, like I said, two other books. Um, I am going to read the other two books probably because it wasn't the writing or the plot or anything like that. It was mostly Miranda that I really didn't care for. And you know, it's just a character. Let me jump into another story and see if I like those characters better. So there are my two little reviews. Oh, and this was also the first book that I read for the Summer Fling. Um, it is for it was for the hot and spicy um, category, and it did fit the prompt because it got very adult. There was a lot of graphic scenes in this book. Very, very spicy if you guys are into that. Also, the other thing is too, I should mention, is that if you are a foodie, if you are one of those people who you know, loves food and stuff like that and likes to try new things, you might really be interested in this book because there were actually a couple recipes at the end, which was kind of fun too. But they talk a lot about different foods. And I'll be honest with you guys, most of the foods I had no interest in because I am a bar and grill kind of girl. Like, give me wings, give me a burger, french fries. I'm happy. I'm not into all these fancy dishes and things like that. So, but that's definitely where this book went. Sorry for the scratching in the background. Um, Presley just came in and he's uh, using his scratch pad. So what are the books am I planning on finishing this week, you guys? So like I said, my goal is seven. I finished two. I have five to go. So the other five that I want to read is the one I plan on starting a little bit later today. I've got to run out uh, a few minutes this morning and then I'll be home this afternoon to listen to some more audiobook. And it is Beard and Mind by Penny Reed, the fourth book in the Winston Brothers series. My mother actually just finished this one. So she's he ahead of me. And she really, really liked it. So I'm very excited. This is, I believe, about Bo and Shelley. And Bo, I think, is the, t the other twin brother from the first book. Or maybe I'm wrong. And Shelley is a new mechanic working at their mechanic shop. And my mom was kind of telling me some things. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I just want to read it. But it's Chris Brinkley narrating it, and I think Angela Dawes. So it was Joy Nash who was narrating the first three books. So I'm not too sure why the change in narrator, but my mom said the narration on this was really good. So I'm very, very much looking forward to getting to this one. And then this weekend, I will be listening to Just One of the Guys by Kristen Higgins. Still hands down my favorite Kristen Higgins novel, because it was my first. You never forget your first Kristen Higgins. <laughs> And this one's about a girl. This will be like my third or fourth read through this book. And I'm co-reading this with, uh, or buddy reading this with Rainy over at Rainy Day Reads. I keep mentioning this book all the time. It does have some adult content, but it's mostly fade to black or behind closed doors. So I think that is something that she'd be much more comfortable with. Um, she doesn't mind reading about some of the other things, but if, if she had a preference, she'd rather not, which is absolutely fine. I'll be honest, a lot of the times in romance novels, I tend to skip a lot of those pages because like after the first scene, I just kind of want to see how it, those, those scenes are being written. 
But after that, it's just kind of like, yeah, you know, flip, 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 flip. Get, let's get back to the story kind of an idea. Um, so anyway, this is about a woman uh, by the name of Chastity, and she has four brothers. And all of her brothers are kind of in, like, people helping jobs. One's an EMT. I think one's a firefighter. One is serving in the army um, or the military. And did I say EMT? A firefighter, maybe even a police officer? I cannot remember. Um, oh, their father, I, and her father, I think, is the chief of, or was the chief of the fire department. And so I think one of the brothers is a firefighter for sure. And um, anyway, they have a friend by the name of Trevor. The four brothers have this friend named Trevor. And Chastity's had a crush on che Trevor ever since she was a little girl. But of course, they all kind of grew up together. He considers her kind of like, you know, just one of the guys, you know, like she's always been rough and tumble with her brothers and she just kind of fades into the background in a way. She's very quiet and she's super tall and she's a little awkward and she is an absolute delight. And I love this book so, so much. If you have not read this one, you need to read it. It's an older one by Kristen Higgins, but oh, it's so wonderful. And it's available as part of the Audible Romance Package. So definitely check this one out. Um, next up, the one I'm currently reading, I, the physical copy is in, is in my bedroom. It's on my bedside table, but will be A Highlander in a Pickup. And this is the second book in the Highland Georgia series. I read the first book a couple months ago, A Highlander Walks Into a Bar. And this one is, um, so this is about a small town in Georgia called Highland, Georgia. And every year they put on this Highland Games Festival. And uh, this character by the name of Anne, Anna, is um, is going to be putting on the festival all on her own. So that's really all I know about it. I know why. Um, it's because Izzy, from the first book, her and her mother used to put the festival on every year. But something happened in the first book. I don't want to give away any spoilers. Um, and, uh, so now Annie's kind of looking after the festival. So I'm only about 20 pages into this right now, but, um, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. And then we're going to get into a cozy mystery, you guys. Killer Kung Pao by Vivian Chen. This, I believe, is the sixth book in a Noodle Shop mystery series. I do not know very much about it. I know it's a cozy mystery that takes place in a noodle shop. So I am very, very intrigued and very much looking forward to it. And the last book I hope to finish this week is a Harlequin Desire novel, and that is Blame It on the Billionaire by Nina, uh, Naima, Naima, I believe, Simone. And, um, this is also for the Summer Fling. I believe this is for Big City Life, for the Big City Life Square. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not sure at all what it's about, but it's a Desire novel, so you know it's going to get hot and spicy. I have heard wonderful, wonderful things about this book and about this author, so I'm very, very excited for this one. So guys, that is all that I have for today's clip. Um, I guess I don't plan on finishing any books today, but I'm hoping to tomorrow. But I will definitely be checking in tomorrow regardless and uh, give you guys a reading update. So I'll talk to you then. Bye, guys. Hi, friends. Happy Thursday. It is the 6th of August today. And no, you're not missing a clip. I did not record anything yesterday. It completely slipped my mind, to be completely honest. It was a long and tiring day. I didn't do much. I was just super duper lazy. So anyway, I am here today. There was not much to share with you yesterday anyway, so it's really not that big a deal. But I have a few things to share with you right now. One is some good news. The second is a book haul uh, that kind of goes along with the good news in a way. The reason for the book haul. Yeah, the reason for the book haul is the good news. And I do have a book that I finished uh, reading, so I will get into that first, actually. So earlier today, I finished reading A Highlander in a Pickup Truck by Laura Trentum. I loved this book so much. Um, I gave it four and a half stars. I thought it was so adorable. So it was about Anna and uh, Ian. And I usually say with contemporary romance that uh, this is the second book in the Highland Georgia series. That I usually say that with contemporary romance series, you don't necessarily need to read the books in order. I actually think in this series it might be beneficial to you to read the first one, which was A Highlander Walks Into a Bar, which I read earlier this year and I really liked as well. Um, because this story follows on the heels of that story and the, this story happens because of that story, if that makes sense. So without giving too much away of the first book, it's not really a spoiler per se, but um, the two main characters in that book um, are now in Scotland. This takes place in Georgia, and they are now in Scotland and expecting their first child. And every summer, uh, Izzy, the main character from the first book, her mother, uh, her and her mother put on this big Highland Games 
um, event over the course of a weekend. Uh, Highland Georgia is kind of a little Scotland in the south, if you will. They really kind of go with that whole town name, and it's very Scottish-themed, the entire town. It's absolutely delightful. So because Izzy is having this baby in Scotland, her mother goes to be with her because she's very close to giving birth. So um, they send Ian, who is the caretaker's son and a good friend of the male character in the first book, Alistair. And he comes to help um, Anna, you know, put the games on. Well, at first she she's completely resisting any help from him. She can do it all by herself, you know, very stubborn character. And she runs the local dance studio. So, of course, it's their romance. And it was super adorable, super cute. Uh, you know, like, I, I really do love this kind of thing. You know, he's Scottish and she's, you know, American and, and uh, you know, the whole Scottish aspect in this small town. You're meeting characters that you met in the first book. There is going to be a third book that is coming out, I think, in September or October called The Highlander Comes to Town, which is, of course, a Christmas-themed one. And I do have it from NetGalley, so I'm super excited to get to that one. But there are only the three books in the series so far. I do not know if there's going to be more or what have you, but I absolutely recommend this one if you like small town romance. Now, there is some adult content in here, but it's not as graphic as, let's say, a Jill Shalvis. Um, but it is there, so do be forewarned in case that's not your cup of tea. But um, like I said, I think it's something that would be a bit manageable by most people because, again, it's not super graphic and it's not long long and drawn out and it's not you know what I mean it doesn't take up half the book let's put it that way so yeah super super fun and I absolutely recommend this one so on to the good news then the book haul so um I have had this under my hat for about the last month and that is I applied for a position a month ago and I have interviewed now twice with them and I was actually going through a headhunter or a what do you call it? Like an employment agency of sorts. And um, so finally I got the call today that um, they are hiring me for the job. I'm super excited. I'm not going to divulge too much about it. Um, I am going to be going back into an industry that I worked in many years ago that I actually didn't realize how much I was going to miss until I was out of there. And I will be doing a administrative customer service type job. I will be speaking to clients on the phone and setting up appointments and things like that. It is a pretty, um, it's going to be a good job because I do have the background knowledge. I worked in this industry for five years and granted it was six years ago, but during my interview process with, uh, you know, the firm, I was able to, uh, remember <laughs> a lot of the things that I learned back when I worked for a different company in this industry before. And it's funny that a woman, the woman who used to be my manager when I worked there, bef when I worked for this, um, uh, uh, this uh, industry, for lack of a better word, before, actually now works for the same company. She has moved from one company to another. So um, I had messaged her to ask if I could use her for a reference, thinking she was still at the old place. And she's like, oh, funny enough, I'm here now too. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I gave her name and they were like, really? Because of course, you know, they know who she is now. It's a bigger firm. It's across Canada. I think they're starting to open out in British Columbia, mostly right now in Ontario. Um, and yeah, like I said, I don't want to divulge a lot um, for privacy reasons, of course. But I am super, super excited. I am really thrilled to be finally getting back to work. I've been off of work since the end of March. And while it's been great, on the other hand, this part of me just kind of really needs to get back into a routine. Now, the one thing is, though, is that I'm not actually starting until mid-September. So I still have about five weeks off. So I'm treating this like a really nice, like, you know, now that I know the end is in sight, um, I'm going to treat it as a really, really great vacation. So I am... I treated myself today. I went out and purchased some books to celebrate. <laughs> um, Garrett and I went out and he wanted to go to this one store. And I said, well, can we go to the Salvation Army? Because I always talk about going to Value Village. And I do like Value Village. But my problem with them is, for their books, is that their Harlequins are, oh, they always say that their Harlequins are 99 cents. But I can't tell you the number of times that I go up to the cash to pay and they are charging me more than that. Because... 
the cashiers just don't know. They don't know to look that if it says silhouette, that's what they mean. You know, if it's 11 inspired, it's all the same thing and it should be all under the same banner. Um, you know, any of those category type romances, but the Salvation Army, which there's a couple of them in the area. There's one in our town. There's one in the next town over and one the other way too, that they are, all their soft cover books are 99 cents or four for, or five for four dollars. And their hard covers, I think, are two dollars each or something like that. So they don't have a huge selection, but I mean, they had a really decent selection. I bought 10 books there, so it only cost me $8, so that's not too bad. And I didn't feel like going all the way two towns over to GNU Books, which is like my favorite used bookstore. I thought maybe I'll save that for a few weeks and maybe have another little book haul. But anyway, so I got, like I said, 10 books, so let me share them with you. So they're all Harlequin novels. I got um, Baby Bombshell by Elisa Ruff. This is part of the Babies and Bachelors series. Really cute cover. <laughs> I'm not usually one for baby type stories, but you know. Again, as I always like to say, I am a collector as much as I am a reader. So I got that one. Um, I also, they've all got stickers on them. Um, so sorry about that. I will peel these off afterward. I also got A Man Worth Keeping by Molly O'Keefe. This is part of the Mitchells of Riverview Inn series. And it's a Harlequin super romance. And it is April of 08, the date that one came out. And then I found an old Harlequin romance, The Heir's Chosen Bride. This is by Marion Lennox. And there's a sticker over the date. It is July of 2006. So I got that one. I got this one. Now, I have um, a lot of these on ebook, but this is the first one that I have now in print copy. And this is a Love Inspired Historical. So they did a, a historical line. It didn't last for very, very long, or for, or for very long. But it's essentially historicals that just are faith-based. And because I saw this one in print, I thought, okay, I'll pick it up. And this is from September of 2016, and it's A Rancher of Convenience, and it's by Regina Scott. And this is part of the Lone Star Cowboy League series. So yeah, really lovely covers on these. So I got that one. Another Harlequin Romance. This one's a little bit more recent, April of 2017. And this is Stranded with the Secret Billionaire, also by Marion Lennox. So, what did I say this one was? 06 to 17, so 11 years later. This is the difference in covers. For the Harlequin romance line. So just to show you guys. But yeah. So I got that one too. I got an old silhouette intimate moments. And this is Emily and the Stranger by Beverly Barton. I was watching Nicole from Who Picked This Book last night. She did a live book haul. Like a birthday book haul. She bought all these books. Like over 100 books. For her birthday weekend. And she was doing a live show. Showing them all off. And I said to my husband, I'm like, I so want to do that on my birthday. You know, don't buy me anything. Just give me cash. And I want to hit like every thrift store in like from Toronto back like down east, like east of the city and just like have a weekend with just shopping for books. And then I think that would be so much fun. So anyway, this reminded me of, of her haul because she got a, a bunch of these for free, I think, at, at one um, used bookstore. This is from Silly Stickers Over the Dates. Uh... June of 1998. So yes, definitely clearly a 90s book. Um, I also got a Presents. They, uh, this thrift store often has a lot of the Presents novels. I guess maybe somebody in the area reads them and always brings them in. But this is The Italian's Christmas Secret by Sharon Kendrick. This is, I think I was talking to somebody else about this. When most people think about Harlequin romances, these are what they think about. The iconic white covers with the red, you know, banner and the circle picture. You know, at least that's, you know, that's what my aunt always read, were these har uh, types of Harlequins. I got an old um, Harlequin historical, which I was very excited about, because sometimes these are, these are fewer and far between, I often find. I do not know the date on it, because again, sticker. Did they put it down there? No, they did not. Why would they do that? Is this even going to tell me? Nope, of course not. This is a... Uh, the, Pro uh, the Proposition by Kate Bridges. It's a Western, gorgeous cover. And I love that the cover kind of stretches all the way to the back. I think that's really pretty too. And then also on the inside flap, you have that. Does it give me a date on the inside? 2004, so it's not that old. But yeah, these ones are, the older historicals are ones that are sometimes hard to notice that they are historicals unless you look at the side where it says Harlequin, Hold on, let me uh, 
where it says Harlequin Historical Western on it. It would say Regency or Medieval or whatever it happens to be. But the older ones are sometimes hard to notice if you just look at the front because it doesn't show that it's a Harlequin Historical. Not like... Excuse me for reaching, you guys. Just to show you the difference. Not like the newer ones that would look like that. Like, clearly you can see that's a historical. These ones, the older ones, you cannot see that. They, they presented themselves more as, you know, the, the typical um, historical romances that you found, you know, in, in bookstores and stuff like that. Like, not that these weren't in bookstores, but I think you know what I mean. They were trying to be more concise with all the other old historicals that you would see in the stores. I found an old Blaze novel. This is from December of 03, Stroke of Midnight, and it's a trilogy. And it's by, by Jamie Denton, Carrie Alexandra, and Nancy Warren. Very spicy cover on that one. This one should be good. Number 114 in the series. And last but not least, another. Okay, so this will kind of show you guys the difference. So um, this one also, is it also by Kate Bridges? Also by Kate Bridges, Alaskan Renegade. Yay. Whoops, sorry for shaking the camera. An Alaskan novel. Oh. If he's in Alaska, well, it looks kind of dusty and warm, so maybe he can go without a shirt. I don't know. But do you see right there? They've now got that little banner there. This is from 2009, so it was about five years afterward. But, yeah, so you can see the difference. Like, the old one does not have the banner, and the new one does, just to signify that it was, in fact, a Harlequin historical. But it still says on the side that it is a Western. So, yeah. So that is my used book haul. Then I said to my hubby, I'm like, I'd really like to go to Chapters, which is our version of Barnes & Noble up here, Chapters Indigo. I still always refer to it as Chapters um, because there was a Chapters and then there was an Indigo and then they merged. So I went in there and I like to go look at the thrift table, like the table that's all the stuff's on sale. Um, I bought two books. So I'll tell you this first. When I was checking out, they're like, have you heard about our new points program? And I'm like, no, I haven't. Tell me more. And <laughs> so essentially it costs X number of dollars every year and you get automatically 10% off everything, regardless if it's on sale or not. And not everything, electronics are a no, you know, American Girl dolls are a no, ebooks are a no because they also have the Kobo. They're the ones who have, who own Kobo. And, um, plus you get free shipping automatically, no matter how much money you spend on all online orders, which is kind of great too. So I had the bit of money and I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. So I was telling my husband and I said, I'm actually going to very diligently, because I've said this in years past, like years ago I had this and I got rid of it and then they got rid of it, I think for a while. And um, I'm going to really diligently keep track of how much I am saving, quote unquote saving. I'm not talking shipping charges because I can get free shipping through Amazon because I have Prime. So that free shipping is not really a draw to me. It's more the 10%. So... I'm going to keep track of how much money I save over the course of a year because this membership is good for a year. And then next August, when it comes time to renew, I'm going to look. And if I've only saved $40 or whatever, which, okay, now you guys know it cost me $40. If I've only saved $40, then I am not renewing the membership because the membership cost me $40. So I didn't save anything. I spent it here. I saved it over here. Does that make sense? If I save... More than that, like, you know, to make it worth the while to keep the card another year, then I'll do that. But I do oftentimes like to price match between Amazon and Indigo or Chapters Indigo because occasionally they're the same price. Like a lot of times one will price match the other in a way in terms of books. For everything else, I'll go with Amazon, of course. And especially if I need something quickly, I'll go through Amazon. But if I'm buying a physical book, then you know, it might be worth it to me to check Indigo because if I can get 10% off, why the heck not, right? So we shall see if it's worth it or not. Already I'm kind of like, mm, maybe I shouldn't have spent the money, kind of an idea, but we'll see how it goes in the long run. Um, and the one thing is too, when I when I got it, they gave me a $20 gift certificate to use online. To So really the membership cost me 19 <laughs> and like Garrett said, but the, $20, but the $40 came out of our bank account. <laughs> he wasn't mad. <laughs> He didn't care. He really doesn't care. As long as our bills get paid, that's all he cares about. So I did, like I said, bought two books. So the first place I went was the um, uh, bargain book table. And I've been looking at this book for years. It came out years ago. Um, this came out in, and originally retailed for $20. Um, does that give me a date on here at all? Acknowledgements, yada, yada, yada. 
2016, so it came out four years ago. And I read the first in this, like, companion set. And it's Summer Days and Summer Nights, 12 Love Stories, edited by Stephanie Perkins. And it's a hardcover. And this, I read the Christmas one, so this is a YA anthology. I'm not a big YA reader. And these, back when, you know, this was written, you know, four years ago, these were, I don't know whether they're still big authors, Cassandra Clare, I guess she's still, Lee Bardugo. I mean, a lot of these names I recognize from BookTube. Libba Bray, uh, Lev Grossman, I think, Stephanie Perkins, Veronica Roth. Um, Jennifer E. Smith. I know some of the names, but I really, really liked the Christmas one. I thought it was super cute, really light, you know, fluffy in a way, sort of contemporary. Most of them are contemporary. A couple, I think one or two of the Christmas ones were paranormal. So I just thought that this would be really fun. And it was only $7 for a hardcover. So I thought, oh, why the heck not? It's there on the table. You know, maybe I'll enjoy it. I, I hope I'll enjoy it. You know, it's, it's a super cute, super cute book. So I got that. And then the book I actually paid like, well, you know, I got off the shelf is I didn't know what I just wanted to really go in and look. I was looking around through the romance section. I saw this and I had seen this book when I was in the States last October, we went to Barnes and Noble and they had a couple of these editions. Now I have never read Georgette Hare and I saw these ones when I was in Barnes and Noble and I really debated. I actually had was carrying them around the store at one point. And then finally said, no, no. And I put them back because when you do the conversion from Can from American to Canadian, it just wasn't worth the money. So then when I saw this one in um, chapters, I was like, yes. So it is Devil's Club by Georgette Hare. And it's a, it, they've reissued it. This is part of the signature collection. It says it right up there. It's like her signature, but an absolutely gorgeous floppy trade paperback. And I am really, really happy about this. She writes um, historicals. Um, very, very chaste historicals to my understanding. Again, I have not read them, but this was originally published a long time ago, I think. Um, let me see here. Uh, copyright 1932. So yes, these are older works. This would, if you are doing the, uh, Summer Fling, this would probably absolutely, well, this would absolutely work for the, um, or this author would work for the, um, uh, the old, the historical option, the, um, the old school historical option. So when I got home, I went on the Chapters Indigo website and I had my $20 gift certificate and I found another one in this set, in this series, and I went ahead and ordered it. So it only cost me $2 because <laughs> I had the $20 gift certificate plus I had the free shipping. So I should be getting that next week. So that'll be in a book haul next week. But yeah, it was the only one that they had on the shelf. So that's why I got it, of course. But, you know, I, I haven't read her, but I'm sure I'll like her. I think this one will be a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, much longer clip than normal, but that's okay. We missed Monday, and we missed yesterday, so we're just playing catch-up with clips right now. But, as for my other reading, I am about to start this afternoon um, Killer Kung Pao by Vivian Chen, which is the sixth book in, the, in a Noodle Shop Cozy Mystery series. I have not read the first five, but that's okay. I'm just going to jump in. At this point, I'm sure it'll be fine. And I'm still listening to uh, Beard and Mind by Penny Reed. I am going to, my plan is today, I was kind of busy. I had, um, we had some things we were doing this morning. I actually filmed a video earlier today. It's going to go up on Saturday. You guys will have already seen it. And getting some other things together. So I was kind of a little all over the place. And I didn't really get to sit down until like after lunch. And then I got the call about the job and I was talking to, you know, the HR department. So I was doing that and then here and I went out. So I didn't have a lot of audiobook listening time today. So tomorrow my goal is to finish Beard in Mind and actually start another audiobook. So I will report back more tomorrow. Um, and yeah, so that's it. I'll talk to you guys then. Bye. Hi guys. Happy Sunday. Yes, it's Sunday. <laughs> I've been pretty much rubbish at the vlog this week. I think there was only three clips in total. But I think that they tended to be a little bit longer, which maybe made up for the fact that I only got three clips for you guys this week. And all of them have pretty much been sitting here. So this is more of a, um, a vlog style wrap up video than it was like an actual vlog vlog. So regardless, um, I have a few things, of course, this is my final clip of the vlog for the week. And I have a few things that I want to share with you guys. So first of all, I have three books to talk about that I have finished over the last few days since I talked to you last. I also have a little bit of a book haul 
because Garrett and I went out yesterday to the thrift store and I got some books and I also of course have my knitting and like my wrap up part of the vlog to share with you guys. So without making this super duper long, let's jump in and get started. So I finished, like I said, I finished three books since the last time I talked to you guys. The first one that I finished um, the other day was Beard in Mind by Penny Reed. And oh my gosh, you guys, oh my gosh, it was so good. Sorry, let me bring up the picture here for you. Um, oh, this book was just fantastic. So there's the cover. I ended up giving it five stars. I have had two five-star reads. It's the 9th of August, two five-star reads since the beginning of the month. That's uncalled, but like that's unheard of for me. I didn't have any in July, <laughs> just, you know, um, to give you guys some context. This one was fantastic. This was the story of Shelly and Bo, and you meet Shelly in the previous book. And what I really liked about this one is, is, it, is that it actually ran concurrent with book number three, because yeah, this is book number four. So with Beard Science, which was um, Jennifer and Cletus's story. So this one runs concurrent with it, but you're not spoiled for either story, in either story. And it was just really fun because there was something that was said at one point in this book about there being some something going on with Cletus. And um, because it's told in Bo's perspective, he's like, yeah, but that's a completely different story. <laughs> Um, Shelly, I adored. She is a brilliant mechanic and a wonderful artist, a, a world-renowned artist, actually. And she actually suffers from very severe OCD. She is in therapy for it. And with these novels, because so far I've listened to them all on audio, that <clears throat> typically what would happen is you'd get a chapter or two from his perspective and a chapter or two from her perspective. The bulk of the story was told from Bo. The times that you did get Shelley's perspective was when she was in therapy. And I really thought that that was very well done. Great insight into the character. I really, really love this one. Um, the author's note at the end was fantastic as she talks about, you know, interviewing people who have severe OCD and, and how they deal and things like that. And it was absolutely fascinating. I loved it so, so much. I didn't think anything could top Beard Science because I loved Cletus so much. But yeah, this one got a five star for me for sure. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So the next book that I finished after that is a book that I actually did not have on my TBR and had, not that I hadn't planned on reading it. I just wasn't sure if I was gonna get to these or not. But you know, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know I've been working my way back through the Babysitter's Club books by Anna M. Martin and I am on book 49 and this week I borrowed it from the library and I read it and I enjoyed it. I gave it three and a half stars. So it was Claudia and the Genius of Elm Street, which was the next one that I finished. So like I said, book 49 in the Baby Stars Club. Now, I always, I think this is, I've only read this one once before. This, this is a reread for me clearly because I read these when I was, when I was much, much younger, when I was a child. But I don't recall reading it more than once. And the title to me is a little bit misleading. It made me feel like it was, you know, a little girl who was just super duper smart, like Claudia's sister Janine. And you can see Janine, you know, in the picture here, helping her with something. And while the girl is very smart, it's more like she's like a showbiz kid because her parents have her in acting and tap and voice lessons and she's done commercials and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I guess she's just making Claudia feel very, in, in you know, inadequate in a way. And I can understand that. But the whole genius part of it, just kind of when I first started reading it, I'm like, oh, so it's not that she's super smart. It's that she's just super talented in all the things. So, you know, um, it, it was a good story. I ended up giving it three and a half stars. These ones are always so difficult to rate because as an adult reading a children's book, it's, it's you know what I mean? It's a little bit different. But these are a throwback for me from my childhood. I enjoyed it. You know, typically these get a three, three and a half star rating from me. So, yeah, I mean, it was good and it was enjoyable. And the last book that I literally just finished before I sat down to talk to you guys, which is why I'm coming to you a bit later today. It's like, what, it's just after 7 o'clock at night. So I'm hoping to get this vlog edited and posted for first thing tomorrow morning. So we shall see if I can do that while I'm sitting here watching The X-Files on Amazon Prime. Um, <laughs> and the last book that I finished for this week was Killer Kung Pao by Vivian Chen. This is, I think, book six in a Noodle Shop mystery series. So this is a cozy mystery, and guys, I really liked it. Now, I have not sat down and done all of my final uh, updates and all those things to, to update on Goodreads and all that. I will do that when I get a chance when I'm done here. But I'm pretty sure this is going to get a four-star uh, rating from me. This was really cute. So Lana, or Lana, is our L-A-N-A. -A. She is 
it's I, I want to say Lana, but I worked with a girl, a woman whose name was spelt the same way and she pronounced it Lana. So I'm not absolutely certain. But um, she owns and runs a noodle shop in this place called the Asia Asia Village, which is in Cleveland, Ohio. So this book takes place in Cleveland. And it is like a shopping mall all geared towards Asian type stores. So there's a noodle shop, there is a hairdresser's, there is a sweet shop, there is like all these things. And she, in her spare time, <laughs> helps solve mysteries. And in this one, the murder itself was actually pretty gruesome. I was telling my mom, and it's uh, a woman um, is in the local salon and she's getting a pedicure done. And someone, okay, so for those of you who might know, um, when you get your nails done, like if you get a uh, shellac or anything like that, they have like a, or a nail dryer, you might be familiar, you put your hands in this machine and it dries your nails. Someone threw that into the foot bath and she was electrocuted. Is that not gruesome? <laughs> I was telling my mom and she says, I'm going to be so careful now when I go to get a pedicure. <laughs> is, is that too close to the machine? You know what I mean? So we were having a good little laugh about it because it, it does seem very, very gruesome. But of course, uh, Lana's on the case to try and, you know, find out who, um, the whodunit. And I really, really liked it. Um, I thought that this was very quaint, very charming, just exactly like any other cozy mysteries. It ticks off a lot of the boxes. It's a single woman. She is dating somebody that somebody that she's dating is in, he's a police officer, which tends to be the way it goes. She has a dog. She has a best friend. She has a meddling mother, you know, and a meddling older sister as well. And I think because I was also reading Claudia and uh, the genius on, of Elm Street, the relationship between Lana and her sister Aunt Anna um, was very reminiscent to me of Claudia and Janine, whereas Claudia being the younger sister like Lana was a little wild and outgoing. At the beginning of the book, she's getting her hair dyed like this silver color. And, you know, her older sister is very studious. She's a lawyer and, you know, or she's going to be a lawyer. So, yeah, it's it was really, really fun. And I, again, I think it was on my mind because I was reading the Baby Search Club book. But uh, I found it really cute. I like the relationship between the sisters. And the only downfall to this one, there was a lot of characters. So this is book six and I have not read any of the previous books. But I don't know whether that would have made a difference or not. I wasn't lost in any way, but just be known going in that there are a lot of characters that are talked about in this book. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's a, if this is a cozy mystery series that you haven't checked out yet, and you like cozy mysteries, I definitely recommend it because it was really delightful. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, I got a message on my phone and for some reason it shut down the camera. I don't know. But now I want to share with you guys the book haul. So the hubby and I went out yesterday and um, I went to my favorite little thrift store, uh, Gnu Books, up in North Oshawa. And I picked up a few things. So these I actually, these were not from the, the bin that I've talked about before. This is the store that has the, you know, 50 cents each or five for a dollar fifty or whatever it is of the Harlequin books. And I was going to go through that bin and I thought, let's see what else there is on the shelves. And actually, it's funny because I was going in specifically looking for other books in that Noodle Shop mystery series to see if they had them because they do have a pretty big selection of cozy mysteries. They have a pretty big selection of like just about everything. But alas, they didn't have any. So I scoured the shelves and found some other things. And clearly, clearly I was in A, a Christmas mood and B, a Debbie Maycomber mood. <laughs> so I got three Debbie Maycomber books and I got three Christmas books. So one of the Debbie Maycombers isn't Christmas, but I'll show you the, um, I'll show you the Debbie Maycombers first. So let me see here. So the first one I got here is the non-Christmas one from her. And this is Texas Home. So this one looks really good. Um, and I do believe that these are, these are a two in one. So you're getting two stories in one. And this is Nell's Cowboy and Lone Star Baby contained within this volume. So I kind of like bind ups like that where you're getting two full length novels together. So yeah, beautiful looking cover in pretty good condition. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. The other two, of course, Christmas stories. And the first one, this one was in such great condition is Kisses in the Snow, again, by Debbie Maycomber. Look, everyone has, has a dog on the cover. Like, there's a dog right there. There's a dog right there. But yeah, Kisses in the Snow. Again, this is two, I believe, because this one isn't terribly long. This one comes in at just over 300 pages. So, and there's two stories in this one, too. So my thought is that these are two novellas. And one is called The Christmas Basket, and the other is called Let It Snow. So, um, yeah, 
this looks really, really cute as well. I just, it's funny. I've noticed that Debbie Maycomber's an author I was never really, I mean, I read her stuff every now and then, but not very often. But now I find I'm gravitating towards her books. Maybe it's because I'm getting older and, you know, these are more the stories I kind of want to read. But yeah, I am really excited about that one. And then the last one is, it looks like another little shorter novella book, but I don't think it's a novella. It comes in at, well, 226 pages. Um, I think it might actually have another little short story at the end. Um, oh, it's just like the introduction chapter for her next book. But uh, this one says it's the first time in paperback, and it is 12 Days of Christmas. And I think it was Brie, I was showing the girls, uh, Brie and Chloe and them, that I had bought this. And Brie was all excited. She, she said she really loves this book. So I have a lot of Christmas books to choose from this December, um, November and December. Both months might end up being months that I am reading Christmas, like nothing but Christmas books. But we shall see. So the other books that I got the next Christmas one that I got, was Holly and Ivy by Fern Michaels. I had this one, I think this was a, was in an anticipated reads when it was released a number of years ago. I remember talking about it in a video, and I'm pretty sure it was an, an anticipated, this was from 2017. And back then it was on hardcover, and I think this is the story about two sisters, um, one named Holly and the other named Ivy, uh, over the holidays, clearly. So I saw it in um, paperback, and I thought, okay, why not, I'll pick it up. I may own a copy for the Kindle, but I'm not absolutely certain. But I thought, uh, this is a gorgeous cover too, so I thought, why not? And then everybody on BookTube, well, everybody in the romance community on BookTube is doing these mystery boxes that they're buying off of eBay, and they're like all these mystery, like not mystery stories, but like a box that you don't know what's in it, like a mystery historical romance box. And I'd love to order them, and I've looked at a couple of them on eBay, but to be honest, to come to Canada, it's like $40. It's, it's the cost of the books just to ship it. Like it's 20 for the books and another 20 plus to ship something like that. So I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, I wish maybe one of my local stores would do up a mystery box. I think that would be so much fun and to buy. But regardless, I've seen a lot of people doing these and a lot of people are getting the Johanna Lindsay books. And I know everybody seems to really like her work. And I'll be honest and say, I don't think I own anything by her. I maybe own one or two titles, but I saw this one and it's a Mallory novel. So I'm assuming this is part of a series. And this is Beautiful Tempest, uh, again by Joanna Lindsay, and the cover looked great. And I'm thinking, is this some sort of something on the high seas? So on the back, it said something about, um, uh, uh, what does it say here? An American debutante party and whisked away to the Caribbean. So I guess it takes place in the U.S. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very intrigued. And uh, this one looks really great. And it was in really good condition too, which is one of the reasons I picked it up. So we shall see what I think about that. And then last but not least, um, I did look at the Harlequin books and they have a certain area in the front where they have some of these like in bags, like in cellophane wrappers, if you will, with a price on them. So this one was $2, but it's, it's older. It's number 982 in the Harlequin romance line. And it's called No Orchids by Request by Essie Summers. And this I think is from 1966. Um, January of 1966. It's not my oldest. My oldest is just, just below that at 975 from 1965. So these are my two oldest. Are they both by S? No, this one's by Eleanor Farnes. But yeah, so there's my new two oldest, um, Harlequin books. And I'm excited about one day getting to them. This was $2 because I guess they consider it, it's in pretty bad condition. So I, I mean, I wasn't getting it as a collect, like I, I, I am collecting them. But I'm not that kind of an adamant collector that they had to be in a certain condition. So, yeah. there's There was another one that they had with, like, number 18-something. And it was $10, mainly because it was in pristine condition. And I'm just like, mm, I can't see spending $10 on, you know, something like that just yet. I have to catalog this first before I put it up on the shelf. But, yeah. So there is my little, very exciting book haul. Um, <laughs> so... On to the knitting. Um, we did some moving around of stuff today because originally um, the TV was in our bedroom and I would sit in there at night and I would knit and watch booktube. But the problem is, is I had nothing to prop my arms up on. And if you're a knitter, you sit like this. So your elbows are like suspended in air. And you're like, if you think about doing this motion, right? And this starts to hurt, your elbows start to hurt, you know, legit, like I'm not trying to be funny, there can be like, you know, you could 
injure yourself in a way, like by putting that repetitive strain on your, your body. So I said to my husband, I'm like, I really can't sit in there anymore because I just, it, it's too much. So we actually moved the TV in here. It's actually right beside me up on this. We moved the hutch over and Garrett stole my couch. <laughs> it's in the basement. So I'll just turn this ever so slightly. So see, the TV's like right there, right? And, um, and then I've got a little chair now that I'm sitting in, but I got to get a better chair. Because the chair I'm in is great. It's got like, I, I need like, um, armrests essentially is what I need. So that chair is working for me. So now I can sit here and watch booktube and knit. So all that I'm saying is because I did not get nearly as much knitting done this week as I wanted to because my arms and stuff are starting to hurt. But I did get my five squares added to my blanket. So I will show you guys that first as I always do. So that was the last square that I put in. So I added these five. So I've got one. I love that dark purple one. Two. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This one is so pretty. It's a Christmas one, of course. I got this one very pretty. And then oh, my favorite one from that yarn I was talking about last week from the, um, the rainbow warrior is, is what the colorway is called, but isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love the way it knit up. So pretty. So yeah, so I've added another five squares into the blanket and in just a second, I'm going to open up, um, the, how many books did I finish this week? Six. So I've got six squares to add to the blanket this week. So that's exciting. Um, yeah. So I like want to get as much knitting and reading and stuff done over the next five weeks until I start my new job. So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of, I, you know, I feel like I've just been lazy for the last five months. <laughs> the other thing I've been working on, I talked about this last week. Oh, the patterns over there. This is the, um, is it white pepper? I think it's called black. No, it's called white pepper and it's by Alicia, um, Alicia Plummer. I'll leave a link to the pattern in the description box below. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry and it's a cardigan and it uses bulky yarn. So this is going to knit up one site now that I can start working on it more because this was really starting to bother my, my arms and stuff. Um, that's where I was last Sunday when I talked to you guys where the little fish stitch marker was. So that's what I've gotten done. doesn't look like a lot, but I'm increasing stitches every other row. Um, because this is like essentially, this is the back of the sweater. And then these, I don't want to pull it too much because I don't have a lot of room on these needles. That's going to be like the sleeve. So like the sleeves. And, uh, but like I said, it's going to be a cardigan. So this is the back. So next week I'll have the sleeves on hold for sure. So I will be able, it'll look a bit more like a sweater once the sleeves are on hold. So yeah, very, very happy with that. And I'm enjoying working on it, especially because it's in bulky yarn. So it knits up relatively quickly. Um, and last but not least, let's go through my minis of the week. So... Let me take all these out of the bag and then I shall go through them all. All right. So I like to go through these in the order that I read the books in, and I like to try my best to put them in the blanket in the order that I read the books in, but uh, sometimes that doesn't always work. So the first book I finished this week was The Other Miss by Mary Kabaka, which I really enjoyed. That was my other five-star read this week. It was fantastic. Great, great thriller. It's funny. Um, I was talking to Alana, who is Chloe from Always Booked Sister, and Alana used to have a channel. A lot of you might remember her, and we miss her on BookTube. And she read it this week as well, and she didn't love it as much as I did, but she reads a lot more thrillers than I do, and she said the twist she found was a little... She's seen it before, whereas because I don't read a lot of thrillers, it's not something I see all the time. So I think that really made a difference. But she still said she really enjoyed it. She's just, she'd seen the twist before, kind of an idea. So this one's from Lynn. I always know because they're on these little cardboard things. But it's a green. Very pretty. That'll be nice. The next book that I finished I didn't love so much, and that was Can't Stand the Heat by Louisa Edwards. This was my first book for the Summer Fling. First and only book so far this, um, this, in, in August. Um, and I gave this one three and a half stars. So what have we got in here? Ooh, pretty. Ooh, it's a nice big skein. I should get at least four squares out of the blanket for this. I'll just keep recycling it. Like I'll knit the one square and then I'll put the leftovers away and then eventually I'll get to them again. So yeah, that's a really pretty, very pale blush kind of pink color. And then I finished reading Highlander in a Pickup Truck by, um, oh gosh, I don't have my notes in front of me, by, right here, 
by Laura Trentum. <laughs> I enjoyed this one a great deal. I think this was a four and a half star read. Yeah, really, really fun. I liked it a lot. And that was also a NetGalley read. So thank you to the publisher and NetGalley for sending me an e arc of that one. Ooh, we have a pretty Christmas one. Actually, it kind of sort of goes, doesn't it? Sort of. Sort of, sort of. Um, very Christmassy, it looks like. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Come on. Focus. Ah, uh, it's not going to do it. Sorry. So yeah. But, oh, there's a little bit better. So you got greens and reds and browns. Very pretty. Um, and then I finished Beard in Mind, of course, by Penny Reed, my other five-star read this week. Open this up. Ooh, I think this is another Christmas one. That is really pretty. Blues and yellows and whites, and you can see the sparkle in it. Very nice. That'll be lovely. And then I finished Claudia and the Genius of Elm Street. Yes, I did make up um, minis for these uh, for my Back to My Childhood books, even though I didn't talk about them in my TBR, but they are in the bag, so I will get to them. There will be more this month, I'm hoping. A couple Nancy Drew and maybe something else, so we shall see. Um, and ooh, this one's really pretty. So this is... Stripe Me Up. Baby Beluga is what the colorway is called. Isn't that pretty? I guess it self-stripes. That will be very, very cool. I really love the way that these are, are wound up. So yeah, so that's really nice and pretty and bright. And last but not least, Killer Kung Pao by Vivian Chen. Four stars. Pretty sure it's going to be a four star. And another one from the same person who sent me that other one. And this is called Holly. So another Christmas one it looks like. Isn't that pretty? So yay. So there's my six uh, squares I'm going to be adding into the blanket this week. So anyway, guys, that is all that I have. Um, I know I have no idea how long this vlog is going to be. I suspect under an hour, but we shall see. Um, I will promise I will try to do better next week with vlogging. We haven't really been doing a lot. I mean, I've been going to the thrift stores and I really do want to get video while I'm in there. But A, I never think about it. And B, I'm a little self-conscious about doing that, but we shall see. I will try. If we if we go again this week, which I don't think we will, but next time we do, I'll try and get um, some video of that. But until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.